Welcome to The Real News Network in Baltimore. I'm Kim Brown. Haiti's former president, jean Bertrand Aristide, survived an assassination attempt last Friday when gunmen opened fire on Aristide's motorcade. Two bystanders were injured, but Aristide himself escaped unhurt. jean Bertrand Aristide served as an immensely popular president for six months in 1991 and then again from 2001 to 2004 and was ousted both times in a coup. The new evidence has emerged recently in relation to the 2004 coup against Aristide. According to a report in the newspaper AD Liberté, U.S. DEA agents uh, kidnapped paramilitary leader Guy Philippe, and he was also uh, arrested by Haitian law enforcement last month, who was, uh, Philippe himself was instrumental in organizing the capture of Aristide in 2004 at the behest of U.S. agents in Haiti. Philippe says that he was captured so he would not be able to testify about U.S. responsibility for the coup against Aristide. And joining us today to talk about these recent developments in Haiti is Jeb Sprague. Salgado. Jeb is the author of Paramilitarism and the Assault on Democracy in Haiti. He also teaches sociology at the University of California at Santa Barbara. Uh, Jeb, thank you so much for joining us. Th thanks so much, Kim, for having me. So before we get to the story about Guy Philippe, let's take a look at what happened earlier this week with the assassination attempt against jean Bertrand Aristide. Are there any indications about who the attackers were and why they may have targeted him? Yeah, it's actually become very clear. There's video footage and normal and, and, and numerous witnesses to, to this attack. So it's very clear that it was the, the what's called the BIM, the Motorized Brigade uh, police force in the country. And this is a fairly new police force that has been founded um, after the earthquake, <clears throat> where their um, police, some of them were trained specially in, in Ecuador. Some of them are members of um, former paramilitary groups that were inserted into the Haitian National Police. And so it's considered like the strong arm of the police force. So basically what happened then was that Aristide was returning from a court appearance when his car was driving down the John Brown Avenue in, in the capital in Port-au-Prince. And there were around a thousand supporters of the Lavalas movement that were accompanying his car in the streets. So it's, uh, he still maintains popularity with, with, a part of, with, a, with a significant part of the population. And so once they cross, they're in, nearing this intersection, um, this special unit of the Haitian police force opens fire on on, on these people, on, on this group marching and Aristide's car in which, which he is traveling. And one of his security guards is hit in the arm. Uh, and a, a woman nearby the car actually takes uh, two or three, possibly four bullets um, and is very, very bloodied by the attack. And so the Haitian police have tried to say that well, the crowd was throwing rocks, and then they opened fire. But other witnesses say that the, the Haitian National Police began opening fire first, and then rocks started to be thrown, and um, bullet bullet shots return, were returned. But this says something more, um, more broadly of the Haitian National Police, that they're, they're opening fire. They have video footage. They're not shooting in the air. They're shooting... Um, down at the the civilian at, at unarmed civilian population in the streets, they're shooting directly at them, and so the video shows this very clearly. And so it's important here, and none of the news has reported this yet, but it's important to remember that after the 2004 coup d'état, that 400 to 500 ex-army paramilitaries were integrated into the Haitian National Police. So the police force after the coup um, was ha had these paramilitary groups brought into it. While at the same time, a lot of the police, around 500, 600 police that had been loyal to the ousted government or the constitutional go government, those police were, were removed from the force. So we really see a restructuring of Haiti's security apparatus after the coup. And that, that's the context that that this recent event has happened in. So, Jeb, do we have any indications as to why <clears throat> anyone or whoever made the attempt on Jean-Bertrand Aristide's life? Why do they want him dead? 
so since the mid 1980s, um, Aristide John Bertrand Aristide, he's faced um, over half a dozen assassination attempts, and this includes in the it, 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 even an attack into a church in prior to his first election when they came in um, um, attaches these these um, former Tonton Makuts and you know who were being supported by the military at the time and in the late 1980s they came in and um, a, in an attempt to assassinate him killed a number of parishioners in his church and we see attempt after attempt over the years to either kill him get rid of him demonize him um, remove him from the political scene and and his movement and so um, really what we're seeing right now over the last decade especially after the earthquake in Haiti is an attempt to politically rearrange the country and to do this alongside an economic restructuring of the country. So as they're building up more, ex, you know, attempts to, to have more export processing zones with the World Bank and the U.S. funding this, funding this they've also, um, in, since the earthquake and what we can think of like Naomi Klein's shock doctrine, we really see a shock doctrine after the earthquake where now around 15% of the country is um, up for mining, where they have mining permits that have given been handed out illegally via, or violating a lot of the country's laws on mining. So they're really attempting a facelift to the country's political arena alongside this. So they do this, um, for example, through voter intimidation, through um, um, demonization in the media of 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 the popular left-leaning movements, um, <clears throat> really um, voter intimidation, trying to splinter the popular movement. So we see this in the recent election where the popular movement was really splintered into two political currents. Um, and also these, these high-tech electoral campaign um, companies coming into the country to run these campaigns for the, for the right wing in the country. And, and so they're really trying to, to rearrange the country politically. And, and you, can, you can map this out. So if you go back to the 1990s and to the 2000, even the 2006 election, there were around 60 percent turnout, even more er earlier. Um, but you know, the majority of the country of the of voting age population were voting. Now, since the earthquake under this new shock doctrine, in, in the election that brought Marta Lee to office in 2010 and 2011, there was only around 20% turnout. Now, again, in, in this recent election, there was only 20% turnout. So you really see a mass voter disenfranchisement and a, an attempt to rearrange the country politically. So last month, the new conservative president, Yovanel Moise, was inaugurated. So what kinds of policy programs <clears throat> is he pursuing? So Jovenel Moïse, he's he's really a, a hand-picked uh, ally of of Michel Martelly, the former president in the country, and so both of them come out of this uh, neo Duvalierist political strand in the country, and they have some other political allies and opportunist groups that they've they've sort of band together under under their alliance, and there's also. You know, a growing uh, um, evangelical uh, sector in the country, a, you know, a lot of evangelical missionaries going into the country. There's also a small growing middle strata in the country, often linked to NGOs and, you know, uh, you know, some of the some of the businesses coming into the country. So um, he so they've been able to build on this um, sort of a, alliance that, that, that this this more right oriented pro-business, elite-oriented grouping in the country. And so one, um, they have a number of, you know, campaign promises and, you know, like we see in the electoral campaigns of, of these elite-oriented electoral arenas. Um, importantly, though, one of the things they're trying to do is they want to rebuild the military. So the military was disbanded in 1995 by, by the, in, under the first Aristide government. And so the military in the country has been used for many decades um, as a force for internal repression. It was initially 
built up under the first U.S. occupation in the in the early 20th century, and then it was um, used under the Duvalier Duvalier dictatorship, and then uh, you know up up through the 1980s, and, and it was used in the first coup against Aristide in 1991. And so he disbanded the military, and so similar to Costa Rica trying to build a country that had a strong police force, but with no military. Um, and so as we see then, uh, so a lot of the most violent rightist sectors come out of this former military, paramilitary strata that um, really see Lavalos as the, as the main threat, the Lavalos movement as the main threat to them being able to reproduce their power and impunity in, in society. We're speaking with Jeb Sprig Silgado about the transition and the ever-changing um, political landscape in Haiti, especially uh, coming on the heels of a recent assassination attempt um, of the former president, Jean Bertrand Aristide. So stay tuned for part two of our conversation right here on The Real News Network.